Right, good morning everyone. I thought um, I would just share one or two of the little projects I've been doing and um, perhaps share some homemade woo. Um, the project I have been doing recently is um, historical research into the um, bee man and his bee van. Now predominantly uh, my, my focus has been on the Berkshire uh, bee van but um, the first one which was ever built was um, by the Hereford Sure, Beekeepers Association and a bee expert in the 1890s would go round Herefordshire um, in his bee van um, and educate the uh, rural populations onto the virtues of modern beekeeping. Now when I say modern beekeeping I mean beekeeping which involves using boxes as opposed to skeps with removable frames. Um, now my research stumbled across um, this gentleman called Alfred Watkins and he was the secretary of the Herefordshire Beekeepers Association and the Berkshire Beekeepers Association, which I was investigating, had communications with him. Years, years before, um, I was um, listening to an audio book by John Michael Greer. It was the Encyclopedia of the Occult, and um, he he did mention Alfred Watkins, and uh, the the reason for this is because in the 1920s, I mean this, this book here is 1922, Watkins wrote a book, The Early British Trackways, Moats, Camps and Sites. Watkins discovered, some might, might say invented, ley lines. Now, um, some people today have a little bit of knowledge on this and, and they kind of associate it with perhaps the energetic nature of this but the thrust of Watkins's argument was that um, we had a um, prehistoric period of time people um, had to travel across this very wild uh, wilderness, whether that's true or not, is up for debate. And to do this, they would use features in the landscape. Um, and some of these features obviously are natural, and some of these features were made um, by uh, prehistoric man um, in order for them to travel from sight line to sight line. So all this would be based on um, you see a point in the landscape whether man-made or not and you head for it and in doing so um, by virtue of doing so it, you you create a straight path now there's something similar in um, highways authorities if you ever study town planning which um, yeah for my sins I've done um, there's something called desire lines. Now, if you um, have, say, for instance, you've probably seen this sort of um, they someone builds a I, I don't know a shopping uh, shopping centre um, which has a square form, a square, and you, in the middle of it you have a green. Now, what human nature being human nature, people will take diagonals across the green. They want to get from point A to point B and they'll go the shortest route straight line and it's just human nature. So the argument Watkins was ma making was by virtue of um, these features in the landscape you would get straight lines, desire lines and 
another observation he made was that the uh, the villages which um, these uh, nodes in the landscape where perhaps there was a feature uh, a site sight line, a site marker, almost like a signpost, had the word, had the suffix L-E-Y, um, which most of them are pronounced um, lay. So um, in the village that I'm looking at, it, it would have um, Hayley, uh, Lillay, and one or, one or two others, East Stillsley, West Stillsley, uh, and the such like. So um, I did get this book out of the library because my, my research into the bee van, I thought, OK, well, I'll, I'll have a look at this book. And then I thought, OK, well, I shall uh, experiment. Would it, say, work um, with churches? It, um, he does actually um, mention that churches have been used as um, marker points in the landscape for ley lines. In fact, churches are often built on, say, uh, megaliths or something of a prehistoric nature. It's perhaps um, that particular point of the land was seen sacred. They would build churches on it. Churches tended to have spires or towers. So I thought I would try it with um, a, a church in the village where I grew up, the village of Beden, and this is St Nicholas Church in, in Beden. And I thought, well, what I'll do is um, just draw a line using Google um, Google Earth from the uh, spire of St Nicholas Church. If I actually put it to one side on the ridge line, and I thought, well. Let's just follow the ridge line um, of the church. It seems to be the sort of direction the church is orientated to, and um, see what um, see what it would find. Uh, it would come up with. Um, naturally, um, the probability must be high that if you drew an infinite line from any point. Um, that it would meet, I know, a building. Uh, that, that's that's not too difficult. It's quite a populated country we, that we live, but it could meet uh, another feature in the landscape. So may, maybe in terms of um, probability, you know, it, it, um, a line hitting another feature perhaps isn't too too um, too low. And it hit, or it met, another church, the Hampstead Norris Church. I think it's St Mary's the Virgin Church in Hampstead Norris in Berkshire. It hit, it hit the middle of the church tower. Isn't that a bit spooky? Obviously, you could say, well, maybe the Google map Google Earth maps aren't that accurate. Maybe you need to uh, check it by actually going on site and get some coordinates or go and the ordnance survey map. And I, I, I get all that. Um, the, the thing I'm struggling with is what would be the, the uh, out of chance that being sort of a, 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 a random event nothing really too surprising um, or is it of something significant so any ideas on the how I could perhaps give a sensible probability of that happening um, please let me know um, I do have some other stuff which I'm not gonna tell you or show you on this video um, but I'm interested now just to know what you think. So I'll leave you with that. Until next time, bye for now.